Next, in the wake of Hurricane Gloria, 400,000 people on Long Island are still without electrical power. And as you'll be able to see from these pictures from the air, the destruction from Gloria is clearly evident. Tonight, officials in New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut are assessing the damage and seeking federal assistance. This is Eyewitness News with Ann Butler. Larry Metty, Jerry Azar, Dr. Bill Gooch, and the Eyewitness News team. Good evening. Here's what's happening. For almost a million people in our area, it's another dark night. Their electricity was knocked out by Hurricane Gloria yesterday, and it still isn't back on, even though an army of workers is trying to restore power. Our Will Spence is standing by live on Long Island, where the power problems are worst. Well, what's going on? The situation here is that 400,000 folks are without power in the wake of Gloria. It has been a day that has been very difficult for some folks, although officials are saying it was only matter moderate damage done by Hurricane Gloria. Those to whom they uh, were the victims of damage, it has been a very difficult day, and there are a total of 400,000 folks without power. Our question to the people at Lilco, when will the power be back on? Some of them will be getting it back tonight, more of them tomorrow, and we'll be working at it through the week. But the last ones probably won't get it back till late in the week. Also affected, of course, is phone service. Here at its state headquarters, New York telephone officials estimating as many as 30,000 without phones on Long Island. And the question, when will service be back to those customers? We estimate now uh, Tuesday or Wednesday before we have 100%. And the reason for the delay? is now it's a matter of us going in and replacing damaged wire and it's obviously a massive effort and you follow in the wake of long island lighting people yeah once the area has been cleared that is safe for our people to go in we'll be in there immediately replacing everything necessary to restore service it looks like a full moon over long island as we stand on hilltop drive in jericho we find just one of the hundreds of neighborhoods without power as long island lighting works to restore power we check to see how people are coping, and we show you the example of the Schnur family. And they are coping with a rented camper and generator. What we had to do is because of the fact that Luca has told us that it could be three, five, maybe more days, and there really not being any hope of uh, power in the area, nor is there any hotel space available. Uh, we felt that we had to go out and uh, do whatever we could to fend for ourselves. So what we've done here is we've set up a community uh, trust. This is the community bath, the community food bank, and everybody from the area who needs it is welcome to use our facilities. And they do have quite a few takers on Hilltop Drive, uh, the Schnur family's camper. Uh, the Schnur family says that they have been told that their power will not be back for at least one week. And as we told you at the top, that is the situation with many of the 400,000 folks here on Long Island who are victims of Hurricane Gloria. Their power will be back, they figure, in about one week's time. Local, of course, working round the clock, but they do have their hands full. And that is the situation here this evening, one day after Gloria passes through. Back to the studio. All right, thank you, Will. One of the places to feel the full force of Hurricane Gloria was Fire Island. Gloria slammed into summer homes with winds clocked at 125 miles an hour. These pictures are from the helicopter that took Governor Cuomo and Senators Moynihan and D'Amato to survey damage on Long Island. The governor described what he saw on Fire Island and elsewhere on Long Island. We saw the dunes penetrated and violated, showing us the kind of awesome power of the, the ocean when it was riled up. We saw many, many trees uprooted. We saw boats capsized. The governor is asking for federal disaster relief, but as Rosanna Scotto found out, many people on Long Island are relieved the situation isn't much, much worse. Hurricane Gloria hit Long Island the hardest yesterday, uprooting hundreds of trees, tearing down utility poles and electrical wiring. But there were parts of Long Island that suffered even heavier damage. Fire Island was especially hard hit by the hurricane. Today, many of the people who spent summers there took the ferry back to the island, anxious to find out what damage Gloria did to their homes. I'm lucky. I, I'm, I'm fortunate. The people on either side of me got wrecked, but I got a shattered window and just stuff out on the deck but some of the others here they're just you know there's this guy here those pieces of wood went right through his apartment like a spear you know the waves rolled as usual as if nothing had happened but those with beachfront property knew otherwise 
Our roof is on the other building. Your roof is on the other building? Do you have insurance? I, yes, I hope so. Some people in Sayville, Long Island, also felt lucky. Huge trees fell down, narrowly missing their homes. Instead, many of the trees yeah, ripped down power lines. Basically, we lost uh, a lot of big maples. Most of the elms came down, a few shattered windows. Nothing too serious, thank God. So while the cleanup continues on Long Island, assessment teams are figuring out just how much damage Gloria cost. On Long Island, Rosanna Scotto, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. And in New Haven, Connecticut right now, a very serious situation. Extra police are on patrol to prevent more looting. So far, there have been 13 arrests of people who were trying to rob businesses whose lights and alarms are out because of Hurricane Gloria. After surveying damage today, Governor O'Neill wired the White House tonight asking for federal disaster help. Now, most of the damage is along Long Island Sound, where many people are having to use bottled water because they have no electricity for well pumps. And boat owners on the Sound are still having a tough time believing that the storm actually lifted their boats to the opposite shore. We were over at uh, Longshore Marina, directly across. I guess uh, the first part of the storm just blew them over here, and the second part didn't take them back. <laughs> And tonight, utility workers from Ohio and far away Quebec are pouring into Connecticut to try to help in getting the power back on there. Larry? In New Jersey tonight, Governor Kane is shying away right now from giving any figures on the hurricane damage. The shore was crowded today, just like during the summer. But this time, homeowners came to see how bad their property was damaged. In many towns, stretches of boardwalk were ripped up. Uh, the best estimate right now is that 100,000 people still have no electricity in New Jersey. But in New York City, Gloria struck hard at trees. 1,500 uprooted and knocked down. Mayor Koch was out early surveying the damage, particularly erosion along the Queens and Brooklyn coastlines. Con Ed says most city customers have their power back now. It's been one week since Hurricane Gloria ripped through this neighborhood in Patchogue. As you can see from the fallen tree limbs and the electric wires, it'll be some time before people return to a normal lifestyle. For our first segment, let's turn back the clocks one week with this special report from John D'Alessandro. Weather forecasters had warned for days that Hurricane Gloria would hit the metropolitan area and that Long Island, especially Suffolk County, would probably be hit the hardest. As it turned out, they were very much on target. The storm traveled through Long Island at about 30 miles an hour, with winds in some spots exceeding 100 miles per hour. Gloria began to unleash her fury over Long Island just before 9 o'clock Friday morning, and it wasn't until after 3 that the mighty storm left the island shores for New England. But Hurricane Gloria left her mark, taking three lives, leaving over 700,000 homes without electricity, and causing millions of dollars in property damage. Long Islanders will undoubtedly feel the effects of Hurricane Gloria for several months, perhaps years, to come. workers board up a ShopRite supermarket in Bohemia, one of the many buildings where windows were blown out and rooftops blown off at the height of the storm's 100 mile per hour winds. Estimates of property damage for the metropolitan area are very high. According to the American Red Cross, 1,151 homes were damaged, including 48 homes destroyed on Fire Island. When the final figure is in, it could be as high as $100 million. Meanwhile, the federal government says that it will help victims of Hurricane Gloria, but most aid for individuals and businesses will be in the form of low-interest loans and not outright grants. Besides financial losses, hundreds of thousands of homes lost electricity. On Monday, Governor Mario Cuomo named a six-member task force to study how public agencies responded to Hurricane Gloria and to assess in particular how the Long Island Lighting Company responded to the storm and dealt with power outages. I'm John D'Alessandro, News 55. We'll tell you more about the governor's special task force later on in the program.
You know, Lois, a lot of people braved the storm out in their homes, but for others, they had to seek shelter. And Jamie Schiffman visited one of those shelters. Everything proceeded in an orderly fashion. When they arrived, they signed in. If they had medical problems or were on medication, they were sent to either a primary or secondary care unit. Primary care provided for active cardiac patients, Alzheimer's disease, and senior citizens. The secondary care unit was for less serious ailments. A pregnant woman having pains was transferred from one of the evacuation centers to the nearest hospital. Bill Bertoni of the American Red Cross was in charge of this center at the Comac Road Elementary School in Islip. People are being terrific, they're pitching in, real community effort. Just to be safe, the Red Cross brought in medical equipment including IVs, syringes, medications, and a portable EKG unit for cardiac patients. Red Cross volunteers, nurses and doctors